The cleansing of the temple is got to be one of my top favorite stories. It's this, this angry, belligerent, take no prisoners Jesus, walking into the temple, which is the most sacred site in all of the Hebrew culture, and going in and flipping over tables. I love it. I love it. I love the. I love that Jesus gets to be angry because so often we want to just do sad Jesus, humble Jesus, loving Jesus, but we don't want to give him any passion, any anger, any, any humanity. And in this passage, Jesus is human, very human, very angry. He walks into the temple. Now, for those unfamiliar with the, the second temple layout, there was the inner core where the priests went to have their rituals, do the sacrifices, everything else. There was a core just outside of that where the men prayed. There was a, a, another level of, of court outside of that, which was for women. And then there was a court beyond that, which was the court of Gentiles. Now, some of you might have heard the term God-fearer and not know what that meant. God-fearers were the um, Greek folks, the Hellenistic folks, sometimes referred to as, as pagans, although pagan specifically means country lover. It doesn't have anything to do with a religious affiliation. But these are people who were not Hebrew. And uh, men and women who uh, liked what the gospel said but the men kind of came short when it came to circumcision. They were not crazy about the idea. So the men were in that outer core. Interestingly, um, uh, Greek women could be with the women in the women's court and often in the early church, um, especially in the synagogues around other areas. Women were um, running synagogues, uh, reading scripture, all sorts of things, because there were often not enough men because of this god fear status, men didn't want to be circumcised. So in order to have a quorum of 10 people uh, to do worship, the women were doing it. And we have a lot of archaeological evidence about that. Anyway, that's a total side matter. Uh, the court of Gentiles was the court where everybody else could come. And the priests of the day had established that as a marketplace. Now remember, this is Passover. There, The city has flooded by tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. And part of the obligation of Passover is to make sacrifice at the temple. So the temple's doing a really, really good business at this point in time because there's a particular temple coin that people need in order to buy the, the dove or the sheep or the cow or whatever it is that was being sacrificed in the altar inside by the priests. So those who came from various parts of the Roman Empire and maybe even outside of that had their own currency. So they had to come to the temple and change it. Now, there are other places around the city where this was done. Uh, Mount of Olives was a, a well-known place where they could change their, their money. But this was a particular market set up in the temple. So, and Jesus was very angry to see this place that was supposed to be open for everybody being turned into a marketplace. And there's some people who, who have interpreted this as Jesus was angry at uh, the markup of the um, money changers exploiting travelers. That might have happened, but we've got nothing in scripture to back that up. So this is not a Jesus being angry at exploitation financially. This is Jesus being angry at a misuse of the worship space. And we can learn a lot from here because this talks about how we treat our own worship space, how we treat church. Everybody has had an experience that they've gone to church. Maybe some of you went once or twice and never went back. They have an experience of going into a church and not feeling welcome, that there's no place for you. We've all heard stories or seen, seen things, maybe even experienced people with mental illness or, or disease that stand up and want to shout out in the church, and they've been asked politely not to come back. The mother who's trying to calm the quiet child, and the usher goes up and says, you know, we've got a crying room someplace else. How would you get them out of here because you're disturbing people? Jesus didn't want to have any of that. Jesus' version of church meant everyone was together. Everyone was welcome. No one in power had the right to tell anybody else that there was not a place for them. And we can take away from that a lot for our modern churches. What if we showed the same anger that Jesus did and looked at church as a place for everyone? And while we're all kind of isolated in our homes, this is a really good time to interpret Jesus' messages as a call to the church to be better and for us to think about what church is. 
Church is not a building. The building is, is an emotional, wonderful place that carries so much history. And many of us love the churches we grew up in and worship in. But if the church building was destroyed tomorrow, the church remains. The church is not the rocks and the roofs and the bills and the roof repairs and everything else that we get caught up in. Just like Jesus was saying, the church is not the marketplace. It's not the place to exploit people or tell people they're not welcome or to make room where no one can be seen or no one can be heard, no one can worship. That's not the church. The church is a place where everybody, lame, blind, mother, child, grandparents, intellectual challenges, everybody has the place to be. Whether you're heteronormative, queer, doesn't matter. The church is for you. Later on in this story, we hear the children shouting, Hosanna, save us. Jesus is bringing a new way of doing things. It's very threatening to the establishment, to the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Even the Romans feel threatened by this. But Jesus is not going to stop. And we know Jesus is not going to stop. And as we continue our journey, the second day of Holy Week, we can feel the energy is building up. And it had to explode somewhere, and it exploded with Jesus throwing over tables. What else is he going to throw over as the week comes? And what can we, as a Christian community in 2020 uh, 20 and the 21st century, what can we take away from this? What tables do we have to overthrow? What people do we have to push off to the side who are taking away the rights of everybody to be there? How many elders, how many ushers, how many people in authority do we have to say, listen to the children? Jesus is the point, not what you want to make this into be. The den of vipers, by the way, was not a place where, where robbers did their work. It's the place where robbers were safe, where they didn't have to worry about the authority, where they could have all of their trinkets and all of their spoils together and no one could touch it. How many times there are churches, places, where a few select people carry dominance on what we have, what we do, what we be? That's not the church Jesus wants us to be. So... Even though we can't leave the house today, go flip some metaphorical tables. Go find out what it is that Jesus is calling us to be as church. And get angry. Get really angry. There's nothing wrong with righteous anger. In fact, that's how most of the world changes.